First of all, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Bucks, fans, and my teammates. The Bucks helped me return to productive football after I had difficulties that could have ended my career. We worked together to resolve those difficulties, and I will always appreciate that. Being part of a Super Bowl champion team and then a contender is a dream come true. I make mistakes, I'm working on myself, and I have positive influences around me. But one thing I do not do is shy away from playing hard on the field. No one can accuse me of not giving it my all every play. Because of my commitment to the game, I relented to pressure directly from my coach to play injured. Despite the pain, I suited up. The staff injected me with what I now know was a powerful and sometimes dangerous painkiller that the NFLPA has warned against using, and I gave it my all for the team. I played until it was clear that I could not use my ankle to safely perform my playing responsibilities. On top of that, the pain was extreme. I took a seat on the sideline and my coach came up to me very upset and shouted, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I told him it's my ankle, but he knew that. It was well documented and we had discussed it. He then ordered me to get on the field. I said, coach, I can't. He didn't call for medical attention. Instead, he shouted at me, you're done while he ran his fingers across his throat. Coach was telling me that if you don't play, then I was done with the Bucks. I didn't quit, I was cut. I didn't walk away from my brothers, I was thrown out. Being fired on the sideline for having a painful injury was bad enough. Then came their spin. Coach denied on national television that he knew about my ankle. That's 100% inaccurate. Not only did he know I've missed several games with the injury, he and I exchanged text days before the game where he clearly acknowledged my injury. He obviously knew I was on the injury list and the GM acknowledged after the game in text messages to my camp that I did tell coach about my ankle pain on Sunday. I know we were losing to the Jets and that was frustrating for all of us, but I could not make football plays on that ankle. Yes, I walked off the field, but there's a major difference between launching from the line and taking hits compared to jogging off the field with the rush of emotion going through your mind. I am a reflection of my reaction, but there was a trigger. The trigger was someone telling me that I'm not allowed to feel pain. I acknowledge my past, but my past does not make me a second class citizen. My past does not forfeit my right to be heard when I am in pain. First they cut me, now they cage me. Instead of asking how I felt or getting to the bottom of it, the team texts my camp promoting a totally false narrative that I randomly acted out without any explanation. They even told us in writing, don't spend this any other way. I have stress. I have things I need to work on. But the worst part of this has been the Bucks' repeated effort to portray this as a random outburst. They're telling people that I walked off, then I was cut. No, no, no. I was cut first, then I went home. They threw me out like an animal and I refused to wear their brand on my body so I took my jersey off. Part of their cover up, they're acting like I wasn't cut and now demanding that I see a doctor of their choice to examine my ankle. I'm gonna just say this man, I did put out a response. I think I was probably one of the first people to put it out. Uh, Bruce Arians conducting an interview and you can go back and check it. Uh, I think it says something about Bruce Arians need to hold himself accountable, not just Antonio Brown. And you can see the suspicion all over his face. Now, of course, Antonio has done some things um, last week that was highly questionable, that would make people say that was inexcusable, but we have to get in the habit and more of the mindset of actually looking at all sides of, of the fence and stop looking at someone because we know they have a, a behavior problem or a history that we can't overlook and we just wanna just pour everything out on that person. That's not fair. So. Bruce Arians is just as much of the blame, to be honest, because otherwise the situation wouldn't even popped off. Uh, he wouldn't have just ran off the sideline and just, you know, took his uh, uniform off, had somebody not provoked him. You feel me? So it came from somewhere, and that somewhere, and that someone was Bruce Arians. Bruce, I'm gonna just say this, man. If we don't get to Super Bowl, and we don't at least. Um, win two games in the playoffs, this is all on you, bro. This is all on you. 
Um, who knows? AB probably could have preserved himself for the playoffs and for the Super Bowl, but now that won't be anymore because he's hurt. Uh, I think he honestly would have would have fought through it in the postseason, but you messed it all up by talking out the side of your neck. And we can't act like these coaches and these, these managements don't get a pass. They are just as bad. As, to me, to me, I think they're worse than the players because everything is all about the players, but nobody checks what's higher up above. And, you know, that's messed up, man. It's easy to um, put everything on these players. They're disposable. You feel me? Um, they're expendable. And with that being said, it's easy to really target these people because they're the main people who we see all the time on the field, on TV, or in person. So Bruce, you ain't no better. Uh, Bruce, you got a lot of explaining to do. I don't think nothing's gonna happen to him, but he definitely has started fire amongst the organization. And I don't think that the general manager and the owners agree with how he handled the situation. This is about business. This is about getting things done. And you allow team doctors that said he could play today to basically stroke your ego when you know you wouldn't even have checked Tom Brady like that. You would have never checked Tom Brady like that. If Tom Brady says, my ankle is messing with me, man. I need to sit out for a few plays or I can't go back in. You're not going to even fight it. You're not going to say, go out there or you're cut. You're done. You're not going to do that. So if this is actually true what Antonio is going through, I think he needs to go ahead and get his money. One thing this statement did do was clean it up a lot and he'll be eligible to go on the team next year. So his business will be booming. I don't think he's gonna get paid what he absolutely should. Of course, he's older and he's always hurt now at this point, but he's still top tier talent in the NFL and nobody can deny that, period. So it is what it is, y'all. Um, what y'all think? Um, that's pretty much all I got. So, Bruce, get it together, man. Get it together. Grave diggers, Tampa Bay, we off the chain. We ain't worried about a thing. We looking for another rain. We some grave diggers. Ty Bowles, he a beast. Three, four, or four, three. Either way, he bringing heat cause he a grave digger. Hey, yo, 24, yeah, he a grave digger. Get live, 45, he a grave digger. We wear our heart up on our sleeve, we don't even keep score, we just run it up and leave.